Okay, let's restart. Uh, so we have done two things. Introduction about Jupyter Notebooks. I th uh, hope you like it and you will use it even if it's not with Julia. Then a small introduction of Julia, but very small. There is a lot of things to know, to understand. And if you program, for example, in Python, the transition to Julia, it's not difficult, but you will see there are many, many small differences that make you uh, sometimes uh, lose time. So yeah, be try to, to read uh, a lot the documentation of Julia. I think they are improving a lot because a few years ago it was not the case. And uh, uh, if you have questions uh, by email, we're always uh, available to reply to questions about Diva, but also about uh, Julia. Now what we want to do is to propose you to run a full analysis, which is a case which is uh, you will be able to, to create your own product, your own climatologies. But before that, you need to explain uh, how to deal with the input files. With Diva, you have basically two input files. The first one is the data file. And the data file is something uh, typically generated by ODV or processed by ODV, so a set of uh, data that you obtain from the C Data Cloud uh, infrastructure. You apply the quality control, you remove outliers, you select an area, you get a, a file. So this is the first input. We'll deal with that in this notebook uh, number nine, which is ODV that I import. And the second uh, input we need is the bathymetry or the topography. It's uh, something we will use to delimit the land and the sea, because when we do interpolation, we want the interpolation to be performed only in the sea, because uh, the water properties will propagate in the sea. And if you have, for example, uh, an island or something, a physical boundary inside your domain, you don't want the information to propagate across a physical boundary. And that's why we need the topography. Uh, so you can uh, continue if you are, I guess you are still logged in and you are the work, Diva and the workshop exercise folder and you will open the topography uh, notebook. So we'll do again a small exercise and basically uh, explaining all steps and running uh, cell by cell. So this is also nice because these notebooks are example of how we expect notebooks from user to, to be with some description, with some links, with some explanation. So what we want to do here is to explain how to read a uh, topography. You can get two types or many types of uh, topography, but basically work with two, with the uh, Imonet bathymetry because it's the uh, best resolution that you can have on the European Sea. And we often uh, work with the GEPCO, which uh, probably most of you know, just general bathymetric chart of the ocean. And it's good because it's global and often you have uh, you have a... Uh, you want to have a global analysis or analysis which is uh, in a small uh, in a area that is not covered by, by the other bathymetry. Uh, in Julia, when you want to use other modules, uh, like in MATLAB, in Python, etc., you want at the beginning of your code to tell uh, which modules uh, you want to use. So the command you will uh, use to, to, to say that it's uh, using. So you have here using divine D, using pyplot. So it will be used to do some, of course, plots using dates or using statistics. So we can run uh, this cell either by doing run or typing uh, shift enter. And you will see it runs. So what is happening in the background is there's a pre-compilation which is done uh, by Julia. It can take not a few minutes, but a few seconds. It's not immediate. But what's good is that you don't only do it once at the beginning of your code, you, you run the code you load uh, the different packages. So it's already done. So these four packages, these four modules are what we need to run this example. So we have uh, provided you with uh, three uh, different bathymetry. They are all, co all from GEPCO. So originally the resolution was 30 seconds and the index here, four, it means we uh, decrease the resolution by an index of four. So we have 30 seconds multiply by 4 and we get the actual resolution. This one is the same with 30 seconds multiplied by 8. We me it means we decrease the, racial by the resolution by a factor of 8. Why do we do that? Because for the region of interest, we in most of the application, the resolution of GEPCO, the original resolution is too fine. So we don't need this level of, uh, of details. So we decrease ourselves the resolution and provide you these files. So one, each link corresponds to one file. So if I want to download this 
to 16, I need to use uh, this link. If I want to use the 8, I will use this link. Uh, so the first cell is saying, okay, I want to use uh, the bathymetry, which is called uh, gepco 32nd underscore 16. And if it's already on my machine, it won't do anything. If it's not on my machine, it will do download it using the download command and the link which correspond to one of this one. So I think we can uh, run uh, this command if you all, all agree. So it seems like I don't have it yet in my machine and uh, the download uh, was done. So it, it, it's quite fast because this file is not so big. I can run it again and of course if I run the command again it says no, it's already there. So we want to avoid uh, downloading always the same time. So uh, you can uh, run this command. And now from this bathymetry we want to create, uh, we want to read it with, uh, with Diva. We have two main uh, tools. They are called DivaND Extract Bathymetry and the other one is Load. The difference in the name, uh, if you read the description, one of them is uh, that you load uh, on inside the domain that you select and you keep the original resolution uh, of the bathymetry. So it's the DivaND Extract. And the other one is Load. It means that you will match the, bat the resolution of your climatology with the resolution of the of the analysis. Uh, in Julia, what we did not explain, I think, is when you want uh, documentation about a function. In Python, you will write the name of uh, the function. Let's say this one. So I do control C, control D, no, uh, command, command C. In Python, you would do something like, oh, okay, it's this one. Yeah. We'll do like this. In Julia, you will do like this. So putting the question mark before uh, the name of the command will give you all the documentation that we've written about this function to explain how to call the function. So if I want to use the the extract bathymetry, I will have three inputs, three arrays, B, X, B, Y, and B. I need to indicate the name of the bathymetry, which is uh, written in the previous cell, bathymetry. We need to say if this bathymetry is global, so it covers the whole, uh, the world, uh, world ocean. In that case, it's, this value is true. X, Y, Y, uh, I is the is the actual resolution that you the grid on which you want to extract the bathymetry. So we'll exp, uh, we'll try it directly. We'll set the domain. So the domain will start by the resolution. I indicate dx, dy. So uh, resolution, longitude, latitude, I put. Uh, I will put 0, 0.25 and put whatever you want. Uh, you don't need to put the same resolution in both directions. You can say dx is uh, 0, 0.25 and dy is 0, 0.1. You can, you can select. Then ln r is a sequence starting from the minimal latitude going to the maximal latitude. So you can edit and put something smaller if you want. So in the next exercise, what you, I will ask you is to modify and do the extraction yourself. Latitude, the same. So we'll run this and see what we, ex we get. And it's interesting also always when you don't know a lot about Julia, what I, I, I'm not very, very good at Julia, but I use a lot uh, the command type of. The type of, it indicates the type of uh, the, of the, the variable you create, and uh, I think it's it's useful to understand more uh, how yeah what what the code is doing. So type of flat R, it's uh, a type which is called a step range length. So it's uh, like a sequence of number going from fifty two dot three until fifty five dot uh, yeah fifty five. Inside this range, we have the the numbers which are float uh, etc. So it's quite a lot of details. So once we have set the domain, we can extract the bathymetry uh, with the command extract bath. So bath, bath name, uh, we have defined it before, but if you want to, to repeat it here, we can say bath, what is bath, bath name? I don't, I don't remember. Uh, bath name. 
So yeah, it was the data Gepco 30 seconds, but it is global. Uh, I don't remember what it was, but we'll see if we, if we pull it. Uh, but this global is true, saying that we are working global bathymetry. Lon R, lat R, they were defined just here. So we have everything, we understand everything, and we can run it. So the first time you run a function, uh, usually it takes more time because there is a compilation done by, by Julia. And if you want to know the time used by uh, for the compilation, you can just add the uh, add a symbol, which is here, and time. And now it gives you the time uh, used for that, so you see it's very, very fast. Now, what you expect is to check with the plot if the extraction works well. So, this command, uh, we put example here because otherwise, if you say just plot, it, you don't have uh, any idea of the command you have to, to use. It's like uh, it's, you waste a lot of time. So, to plot the bathymetry, we use the p, p color, which is a pseudo color uh, plot. It's available in MATLAB, uh, I think, and in, uh, in Python. In, it's a little bit different, but more or less they are the same command. So, you need the uh, three arguments the vector in x, which is bx extracted by function, by, and for some reason, uh, you need to permute the dimension. So you need to, to let's say, move the matrix like this uh, using th this command. Uh, I will remove this. We mean equals zero. So we run. So yeah. again, if you have problems, you you just ask. It will go uh, to help you. So this is the bathymetry I extracted. So we don't really see what it is. In fact, it's about right, close to here, it's uh, the North Sea. Uh, why we are always uh, interested only in the ocean part of the, of, the, of the domain. So what we can do in the plot, we can add an argument, which will be uh, the minimal value of the, of the uh, of the field that we want to represent. So I will put 0, dot 0. So it means we don't plot anything uh, which is below 0. So now we see a little bit more. So when we have this part, in fact, is the land here as well, and this is the sea. Of course, the resolution is not good, but the idea is not to have a good resolution, it's just to show you how it works. When you have your final decision of what the final resolution you want, you just change it here. I say, okay, I want a final resolution, let's do it. I run this again, I run again the extraction, okay, it's fast, and I run this again. And now it's a little bit a little bit better. So the exercise I propose you uh, for this is simply to create your own region. So what you will have to do typically is to select a resolution in the x direction. I can put whatever you want. Right, 0.1. Then you continue and etc. Lon r lat r. If you remember, it's a minimal latitude. So uh, longitude, you put 40, put uh, not the same as I'm, as I'm putting uh, 5.8, you separate with the uh, column, I find it here, then you have the resolution, the x, again column, another value. So you can do that for the longitude, for the latitude, and then you will rerun the extraction. So I think uh, we can do that the uh, next five minutes. So we just have to select the domain, extract, and plot the result. And it will help you for, for this part. There's a comment for, if you want to have a final resolution of symmetry, you have to download also the uh, final let's uh, uh, see So by default, we're loading a quite coarse resolution. Um, <clears throat> But if you want to uh, have a final resolution, yeah, you will have to, to update also the, the big set. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for the for the other side, it should be fine. But that's that's the uh, mm -hmm. choice you know. Yeah, yeah. So these are some kinds of uh, gap code, but different resolution to prepare to uh, to make more easier to. Uh,
So we're on the same email. So we have you know, also the same for Imonet with Akimiku. For Paragraph 5. Um, so if you need it, you can make it available to the So the idea is to you select your region of interest to see if the plot is the, the region you are working with. If you don't want to type the command, you just uh, copy paste from here. Anybody recommend this earlier? On the screen, it's not easy. But, uh, so if you can uh, raise your hand once you have extracted the domain to see if we are okay, good. If you are succeeding in this. I've seen a lot of plots, so it looks like it, it works. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we have two ways to extract the bathymetry. This one, which keeps the original uh, resolution, and the other one works exactly the same way. It's called load bath, and this one will reduce or match the bathymetry resolution to the analysis uh, resolution that we will use uh, as an in input. So I won't do the exercise because, in fact, it's the same. It's calling the same uh, argument, uh, just the function name uh, change. But we can do it. Let's say I have defined my domain. And instead of using extract bath, I will use uh, load bath. And I will do the plot. And you, you won't see a lot of difference because the two resolutions are almost the same. But this is what we obtain. We have the same domain, but a different resolution is extracted. Why do we do that? We do that because we want to get uh, what we call the, the mask. The mask is uh, set to uh, false or zero when we are on the land, and it's set to one or true when we are on uh, the, the sea. So the mask is, uh, has three dimensions, longitude, latitude, and depth, because the mask is different. If you are at surface, if you are 100 meters, if you are 1,000 meters, it's different. So to define the mask, first we need to define the depth level that we will uh, perform the interpolation on. So I will select a few levels, 0, 10, maybe, you can, again, here you can edit, you know, I just want 100. And then you have the function uh, load mask. Load mask works 
uh, if I don't know, don't remember how it works, uh, always good to do a uh, question mark, uh, load mask. So load mask. It provides three outputs, x, y, y, i, and mask. Load mask, but, but file, the file name is global, x, y, and this again, and the levels. The levels, in fact, is this. So we can easily uh, run the function x, mask, y, mask, and mask, called load mask, but symmetry name, true, because it, yeah, it's, this one was called is global. Do the same, we can keep the variable name. No, it's not, no, but I will keep it true. I don't know how I call the variable. Loan R, let R depth R. So this will create the mask. And to plot it, uh, we use again a P color uh, of, the, of, the, of the mask. So yeah, you can recognize maybe uh, the Canary Island, the African coast, if you know the region, otherwise you, you won't recognize because the resolution is bad. Uh, I think it's all we wanted to show for, for the bathymetry or, or other exercise, but uh, it's basically if you want to edit, maybe you want to remove the island and say, okay, I want to perform an interpolation, uh, trying to de imagine that there is no island, that the information can propagate, uh, temperature salinity can propagate across the physical boundary. So simply replacing the values in the ether mask. So I won't uh, show you the example in detail, but there is uh, an example here, or create an artificial island, it's, it's feasible, or to remove an island. So if you are all uh, okay with this exercise, remember basically what you have to do is reading an CDF file containing the bathymetry to generate a mask that will be later used to interpolate. Next exercise, I don't know if Alexander you want to do, uh, it's a, yeah, the idea is to to read uh, the net the yeah the ODV uh, file. So yeah, it's a uh, reading the data file. So imagine you have used yesterday ODV, you've produced an input file, you've put it in your private code space, you want to read it. So that's what we are doing here. What we need, divinely, div because divinely div will provide the reading function. Uh, Pyplot, because we want to plot uh, stuff. We always, it's always useful, even if it's not the final plot, it's always useful to check. NT data sets, it's uh, a module that Alexander uh, has created to, to read uh, the NetCDF files in, in Julia, uh, efficiently. Date, statistic, and delimited file. I don't know if you need all, all of them, but it's not a problem to, to run that. First of all, we will deal with the ODV spreadsheet. So there are ASCII files that you can uh, you can easily obtain them uh, with the ODV export. You can read them with uh, any any reader. It's 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 very easy. So we expect you in a general in a like a Rhino say real life situation, you have your own file. Here we will say no. Uh, we will provide you a small file with some data. And again, uh, you will run this command download, so it means it's located on one of our server. If it's not on this machine, or if it's not in your workspace, you will download it. So we run this. Uh, and we will download, I guess, so it's a very small file. And uh, as a test, you run it again, say, no, okay, the file is already there. So inside the file, uh, typically you need to open the file and check what is the name of the variable that you want to read. And I check in this uh, this data file, small ODV sample. I don't know. Maybe I can I can check it. Uh, data. I, I don't know if it works, but no. It the the Jupyter doesn't want. Ah, no, it opens. So in fact, I open uh, ODV file with uh, with a Jupyter notebook, which is uh, why not? And you see the if you recognize ODV, you see the content of the file. So I have a lot of metadata. The beginning. Then you have a description of each column. I think it's this line 29. It gives you the title of each column. So if the cruise, the station, the type, the date, longitude, latitude, etc. And uh, you see the variable. So the temperature, it's not called seawater temperature. It's called ITS 90 water temperature. So if I want to read the temperature, I would uh, copy this. And there is also the salinity. Salinity it is called water body salinity. 
So I want to extract the salinity because I prefer a test variable. So I will use con control C uh, salinity. And this is what I write here. You, so you see there are spaces uh, and the variable name. It's okay. We can deal with that. So I've defined my variable. And then we have uh, a function called ODV spreadsheet load. Uh, I think the name is uh, self-explanatory. So I will ask again what is doing this function. So you have always have to have this reflex when you don't know uh, how to how the function works. Question mark name of the function and run the cell. So maybe it takes yeah, okay. Uh, so it gives you the observation value. So the measurement of salinity, the coordinates, longitude, latitude, depth, and time, and the observation IDs. So each observation, if you check the file, in fact, uh, has an ID. Uh, it's not easy to see from from this view, but uh, trust me, there is uh, each uh, each profile has an ID, and we want to keep this ID inside the the, the text the, the the data because we will use them later to to match them to, to a CDI. So it is where it works. T uh, is in fact the type that we will read. Uh, F names is a list containing the file names. Data name is the list containing the variable names, and then you have other arguments like the quality flag that you want to read. Uh, name time and QV local name, local name are a little bit more complex to explain, but uh, it's depending if you're using the CDataNet uh, vocabulary or not. So it's quite uh, yeah. You have lots of documentation about the function, and you know you know you have some example of how to how to to run it. So let's see if it works. So I will get the value coordinates and uh, what is important to note is, uh, yeah, the, the line is too long here, so I will do I'll enter like this. So first argument float 64 is the type uh, of data that I want to obtain. Here, typical error is to put a data file one. It won't work, so I will, I will run it just to show that it doesn't work. And uh, we will see if with the error message we can uh, debug a little bit. So let's run. So let's compile. So running at the same time, unable to read a uh, directory, etc. So data file, in fact, it's not a directory, it's a file. Uh, what we have to, to use here, as a, if you read the description, is either a directory name or a list of files. So if we want to convert this to a list, uh, we need to put uh, the square brackets. Normally now it should work. Another error would be variable name. Again, uh, it should be a list. If I remove the bracket, we get another error. So let's hope it works now. So reading data from file, okay, I read. In this file, we have only uh, 71 profiles. So it's not a lot, but you want something fast just to show you. And it seems to be okay. So if I want to, to check, uh, I will add the cell. I will type ops, ops for example. So we have 71 profiles, but we have uh, 28,000 values because uh, the profiles, of course, they have good resolution maybe, and we have lots of data. Uh, we have the longitude, we have the latitude. Yeah, I'm sorry, the first one is, yeah, is the, the one, that. So it's okay. What we have done is a function to check the observation. It's called check ops. I don't uh, show you the help function, but uh, trust me, you use like this. You put the coordinates as a tuple, and so on. longitude, latitude, depth, and time, ops value, ops ID. And what it provides you is the extreme value. The first dimension, its longitude, will vary between 16 and 17 something. OK, we trust it. Dimension two is the latitude between 35 and 36, 25. Now I mentioned three is the depth between zero and 4,000. And the time uh, between uh, this date, so there are two dates, as we've seen in the previous ex uh, exercise, uh, the exercise before the coffee break, I mean, dates between 1966 and 2016. And finally, the minimum value of the data, which is always useful to check because we want to be sure that your data, in this case, salinity, it's good because it's between 37 and 39. Uh, it's always nice to have plots because this region, you don't know where it is, you don't know the data, so we'll uh, do a plot uh, together. So we have imported uh, PyPlot. So you remember you did using PyPlot, so now we have access to PyPlot function. So we'll simply type uh, plot. 
ops lon comma ops not and see what what we what we get maybe maybe it's good I don't know so I guess it's close to other language stuff you work with, uh, I think MATLAB, etc. What it does, it considers that it's like a trajectory, so you have line between all the dots. So it's not you know, it's not very, very nice to, to understand. So what we add is an argument to the function, and we'll put uh, only circle instead, and no lines in between. Okay, we have data, we have data. Uh, another way to plot is the scatter plot. And scattered, there are more arguments, so you need to specify the coordinates. And then you have uh, an argument which is the size of the points that you want to put. So size, I will put its constant, I will put 2. And then the most important argument is the, the value uh, that we want to see. So you define the C, and the C will add a color of each dot. So I will put the observation value, of course. Observal. So you have colored dots, and the color depends on the on the salinity that we've uh, measured. To be uh, to be more clear, we'll add a color bar. Okay, and we get a salinity between thirty seven and uh, thirty nine. So if it's, I hope it's okay for all of you this this part. So scatter plot. Uh, well, it was here, so it's okay. And now I will show you how to detect or to reselect data. So you imagine uh, I have this salinity which goes from 37.25, but I don't trust the salinity above 39 because I know it's too much. Or I assume it's too much. Maybe it's not, but okay. Salinity above 39, it's not good. So the XSR is select the data with the salinity below uh, 39. So how it goes? First, uh, I will, oops, I removed it, it. So when you remove a cell, you have always the undo button. Always useful, very, one the most useful button. So selection, uh, the variable cell will contain the variable, the indices of the variable that are lower than 39. So 39 is my maximum. You can put uh, another value, or you can put something smaller. And uh, yeah, what I wanted to do is the split cell. So split cell, uh, instead of a one single cell, you keep you cut it into two cells. Maybe you want to run one after the other. So cell will be observation value, which are lower than 39. So let's run that and gives me uh, an array with true and false value. True, it means we are lower than 39, and false, we are larger than uh, 39. So a lot of true, in fact, because most of the value are uh, above, uh, below 39. Then to get the indices, we use the function find all, and find all, in fact, gives the index uh, where we have the true, the true value. So here we go, all the indices. So we have 27,000 data which are uh, below the limit we've fixed, but we add at the beginning 28,000. So remove, let's say, 1,000 uh, data points with that. And then now it is uh, the selection step. So what we do, we create a new variable. I call it Opsilon2, uh, but you can call, uh, call it Opsilon uh, QC, for example, because you, you want to be sure that uh, you remember the original data and you create a new vector, and you use the square bracket, and cell, as you've seen before, contains the indices. So the new vector will contain uh, less data than before, and we have to do that for all the variables, for the longitude, the latitude, for the depth and for the uh, for the field value, so we'll uh, copy this and uh, uh, so upslat Uh, 
Oops, time. Okay, still alive, it works. So that's how you will proceed to do a, a selection of the data. This selection, in my case, is a quality control, but it can work on the, the coordinates. Maybe you will say, no, I want uh, the... So again, good thing is to write something. I want uh, the salinity, no, the longitude. Above uh, seventeen, let's say. So it is uh, marked down. So it's an explanation what you what you are doing here, Aaron. and then you add a new a new cell. We use this example. Copy. Selection, I will call it selection two because I don't want to, to mix everything. I will say find all ops, uh, epsilon, uh, you know, above uh, 17. So we don't need to run it just to show you how we do to select areas or to select data, select depths, anything. We want to Rerun the check ops function to know uh, the, the interval of the value. So I'm lazy, I just copy paste the code because uh, it's, uh, I don't want to type. Copy control. Uh, okay, okay, sorry. But of course, it's the new variable, so it's epsilon qc, opslat qc, etc. So qc, qc. Yeah, this one, I don't know if I've run it, I think, yeah, yeah, okay. Opslat QC. So if you hit the tab uh, key, you will uh, have the variable that starts with opsdeps. So opsdeps QC, opsdeps uh, normal. So it works in any cell if you type, uh, let's say, uh, SE. It will try to find all the variables, all the functions that start with SE. So I have uh, maybe sinus, F, yeah, F sinus, uh, cardinal sinus, sine cos, etc. So if you don't want to type, uh, like me, you are lazy, you always use the tab a lot to, to get the, 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 the variable, the function written uh, for you. So opsval qc, ops id qc. So what we want to show is simply that the minimum and maximum value of the data are different from before. Before we had 39 dot something, now we are very limited to 38.999. So the data selection worked as we expected. So I propose you an exercise, a small one, five, ten minutes, is to select only the observations that are measured in June. So you have uh, help to do that. So you have the function date, months. I will show you, uh, just copy. So if it's always good with the notebook. You don't know what this is doing. Copy, create a new cell and run it and you, you will understand. So, so this function uh, applied on the vector of time. So apply the function date.months. In fact, extract the months of all the observation time that I have. So I have 444, four, four, so April, April, etc., September. So now the exercise, you will create a selector that will give you uh, only the data and the months that you prefer, any months. So let's do that. Anyone is wondering why we have a, a dot there? <laughs> and, a, and a dot there? So this is a bit uh, special about Julia, not, not what to think of when you use MATLAB before or Python before. So the dots generally means uh, do something 
on every element of an array. You know? So if you have an array of normal one, two, three, and you want to add five to it, you know, then you would not just use plus, you would use dot plus, because you would do this operation on every element of the array. And uh, so MATLAB has this a bit also well to, dis to distinguish between the element-wise product and the matrix product. But uh, Julia took this idea a bit, uh, uh, a bit further. So every time when you compare something, yeah, thank you. So this would say, no, I don't know how to add an array and an integer, but if you, if you use dot plus, And can you try array equal equal five? This will just say if, if my array as a whole is equal to five. You know? Of course it's not equal. So it will just return false. But if you want to compare if every element of array is equal to five, then you would use dot equal. And it will cre create an array of true or false. So that's uh, the difference between having a dot and not having a dot. So with a dot, is consistently do something in every element individually. Right? So if you have a vector of day times, and you just want to extract the month of every element, you could of course do it with a loop. But uh, for such simple operations, you can also use the dot notation. So, uh, So uh, date, uh, dot month, dot, and then ops time. And then we apply ops time to every element. So this is uh, a bit different from uh, what is available in other languages. But once you're, you're used to it, it might make things much easier because it saves you quite a lot of loops and everything. Even your own function can at the same time be applied to, uh, to elements. Or to uh, to list of them. Yeah, I'm sure extracts the months, so this doesn't work. So it doesn't know how to extract dates, months, and the list, an array of date months. But it should use dot. It will just apply this function to every element. So when you are new to Julia, uh, it's a typical mistake. Often when you think something is wrong, you get these, uh, I would say, ugly messages because it's not always easy to understand uh, method normal, method matching plus blah, blah, blah. And uh, so you add the dot and it's yeah, often because you are dealing with an array. So if you're dealing with arrays, which is uh, most of the time what we are doing because we deal with uh, data which are stored in arrays, the dot is often uh, the solution to many problems. Ah, okay. Um, the point behind the numbers. So if you just write five, it is a teacher. Then if you write five dot, it is a problem for me. And it's in Viva, it's better to consistently use floating point normal because sometimes the uh, function are work only with, uh, with floating point normal. So Viva is a bit, uh, uh, Julia can create quite efficient code if, every, if the type of every uh, uh, argument is known. And so uh, it helps, uh, yeah, it helps to be consistent to use the same type. Uh, So let's go for the solution. I imagine I want only the generic data. So I will create a selector. I will call it cell dates to use another variables. I use dates dot months dot, which the two dots have different meaning. And this one saying, okay, we apply to all the value of the array ops time. Again, a dot equal equal. And I say generic, I think let's say one. So this is my selector. Uh, I will do again a split cell just to show you what this cell is doing, giving me again the true. 
and the false, uh, we can also, no, it's not the same, it's uh, below, it's here. Okay, sorry, I was, sorry, I was before, it's here. So you have a lot of false, and to get the indices, you type find all parentheses, and you will get the, the indices. So I have zero, which means we have no data in this data set in January, which is okay. I will try another month. I think there were some in in April. Yeah, I have some data in April for all 4,000 data. And then you can use, uh, create the new vector. So Opsilon 3, it's Opsilon uh, the cell date. And ops, lat, etc. So you repeat the command again to have your, your selection. So I think it's. Uh, yeah. So we have, I think we talk about ODV. You have two types of ODV file that you, we, we want to read. The first one is the ODV spreadsheet, but uh, some of us, uh, especially in modeling, but not only, but we prefer to have the NetCDF ODV. So when you use ODV, you create a collection, you have export to, and you have the option to say, okay, I want a net CDF. It's not the same net CDF of the CDF net, uh, net CDF format, but still we can, we can read it. And uh, yeah, you imagine you have uh, work with ODV with the same data set, and you will uh, have with the small ODV sample uh, .nc, net CDF file. If you have a file on your system, you can use it instead of this one. So if you want to use your file, you will just change the path and put uh, the path to your file. I check it. OK, I don't have it on the virtual environment, so it's downloaded. I get it. Yeah. And we have a function ncodv.load uh, that will uh, read this. It's uh, yeah, We tried with very, very big data set, like the whole Atlantic uh, Ocean, the whole data, and we can read it. Uh, I don't remember how long it takes, but yeah, of course it takes a while. So the idea is that to run um, the reading of the of the, the data only only once at the beginning of your run, and then you can, you can continue and play with it. Uh, you imagine already what I will do. I say, okay, it's the ncodv load function that I want to use, but I don't remember how it works. So I will type uh, question mark ncodv. It will provide me the value, the coordinates, etc. So it's similar to the other one. T, the type of the data, the file name, uh, the long name of the variable that you want to extract, because you know in the NetCDF uh, they have a standard name, very, uh, long name, etc. So here, to know which variable you will provide the long name, and then uh, optional argument, the quality flags uh, that we want to extract. In that case, I don't uh, don't really care about uh, which quality flag we need. We'll take all the data. It's already a very small uh, data set. Uh, so I basically would copy this command in the cell and uh, I add the at time which is a macro command that it gives me the time uh, needed to read the file. Opsilon, opslat, uh, maybe I should use new variable not to mix up with the previous but uh, I don't really, yeah, let's say I don't really care otherwise I would say opsilon nc, flat nc etc. But uh, So float64 which is the type, date file, uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, this, this one, data file NC, okay, it's correct. And the uh, long name in this file was water body salinity, so I don't show you here because uh, it's in the NetCDF, so I, can, I can't really show. So let's try it, reading. So what we want to do in the future is that with the first part of the training, with ODV, you create a, let's say, a very big file few few gigas probably you store it in the private workspace and then you come here and you say okay i want to read the file i created the day before a few hours ago so you can have a, a continuous workflow working with odv for the quality control and the plotting and then working with development interpolation so you see we have only 71 profiles also stored in that cdf it works very 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 fast uh, normally this uh, is helping you to see the the percentage of completion of the works, I have a 10%, 20%, because sometimes it's very long and uh, we, 
it's it helps user to see if something is is running here is so short that uh, you don't have the person what happens if i uh, made a mistake and say it's called water body uh, salinity but with uh, underscore i don't know what happens but i will try no netcdf variable found with the attribute long name equal to water body salinity so for for some of you those of you that know netcdf how do how would you do to know the long name of the variable what tool do you use to imagine i give you a netcdf now i send you an email here is the netcdf uh, what is the long name of the variable Use MATLAB maybe. Well, you want to set the that part. Okay, okay. What kind of tools do you use to manipulate the set to that part? Uh huh, okay. So, yeah. Excellent, yeah. So NC dump is a, is a very efficient tool. It's a command line tool that will uh, will help to work on even on big files. It works well. So NC dump, I think it's uh, what we use the, the most. Uh, so yeah, repeat it for the. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. It's also a solution of viewer. Sometimes in the viewer you see the long name explicitly. So you have yeah you have many options. Here, what we could do is simply use the the package that we load, which is called uh, NC dataset, and we can read the netcdf. We will get the result. But yeah, there are many many ways to do it. If you're familiar with netcdf, so I read again the data. Okay. Uh, this part is similar to the previous one, so plotting uh, the observation, plotting the value. Uh, so that's what we wanted to, to show you about that. So a summary of this notebook is two input files that you need for div analysis, the bathymetry that you get from Gebco on or uh, Imonet bathymetry, and then the data file that you get from your own system, from the C data plant infrastructure, maybe from ImodNet, chemistry, biology. And then uh, you have all you need to do the, the interpolation. So if there are specific questions about this one, uh, just ask. And if not, we will start the last notebook, which is uh, the most difficult because it's a complete one which helps you to create a full analysis. So we will put all the pieces together, all what we've shown today, all together and create a climatology. Okay. So let's open the notebook uh, 19 full analysis. Um, So the loading itself is a bit slow. So what, what I propose you to do is while I speak, let's do already the stuff. So try to locate the, the cell, which is called plot the data location. So it is uh, in this notebook. Yeah. And then, once you found it, let's hit run all above. Okay, so it means let's load, let's do everything which is above. And so, while I speak, we will already do um, the loading. So be sure to be on the cell plot locate plot the data location. You will see it if you have the blue marker on the left. That's the cell that you're currently at. And then hit in the menu cell run all above. Okay. And then um, when Julia or when a notebook is running, it's a bit subtle, but you see that this marker was an empty circle and now it's a full circle. Okay. So 
sometimes people are not really sure if something is going on but if as long as this marker is uh, is uh, um, is a full circle it means that uh, it's buzzing it's buzzing it's doing something okay and at the same time if you see here a star it also means that it's uh, currently uh, expected to run so did everybody found the plot data location and then were able to hit uh, run all above? Okay. So, so the idea of this notebook is to, to now make a complete analysis. Okay, so we have talked a bit already before about how to reading the data. So, um, Historically, we only uh, we uh, were mostly working with ODV data, data from in the ODV spreadsheet format, but uh, um, uh, that's kind of the native export format for ODV. But uh, um, uh, yeah, for large uh, data sets, it is uh, more efficient to work with a with a binary format like NetCDF. So that's. Uh, uh, um, that's also possible in in, uh, in Diva to use uh, NetCDF formats. Uh, but in this notebook, we, we use uh, ODV uh, a spreadsheet format. Okay, so it is it's a bit of uh, combining different aspects of what we have seen before. So there are several modules that we need to load. So NC datasets to load uh, uh, NetCDF files. FizzOcean, it is a small module that we wrote also to incorporate other data sources like the World Ocean Database. But we won't use it in this notebook, but it's useful if you, uh, if you, um, if you want to start with the World Ocean Database. We have some, some tools who, uh, um, who directly query the World Ocean Database uh, get, and get all the data within a certain bounding box. And, and so on. So Diva and D for the Diva, PyPlot for the plotting, and so on. Okay. Uh, so the first thing to do is to define the, uh, uh, the resolution. So here we use an eighth of degree in the longitude and latitude. So dx is the longitude, uh, is the longitude resolution, dy is the latitude resolution. And this is the domain that we are looking at. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's essentially the bounding box starting at 11.5 degree um, east to 20 degree and 39 degree north to 64 degree north. And we're using all data uh, within the time range from 1950 to the end of 2017. Okay. Typically, you would uh, your diva analysis will cover the whole water column. Yeah. So, saying starting at zero meters up to uh, say uh, five thousand meter depths, probably not at a, a uniform uniform resolution. So, you want to typically have a finer resolution at the surface and then a coarser resolution at depths. But here, in order to not stress the server too much, and it's, as is a demonstration anyway. We are just looking to the first uh, uh, um, 20 meters, okay? And be aware that uh, making a diva analysis can take several uh, can take several hours, so uh, it would not be very convenient for a workshop to uh, to use this. And so, in this example, we're using uh, salinity, and uh, um, <coughs> and using all the data within this uh, span of years, so for, for um, uh, 19 to 2017, and uh, we're using all uh, winter months. So sometimes, depending who you ask, winter is not the same for everybody. So for some, uh, uh, for some oceans, it is more convenient to define winter starting at December, so including December, January, February, or uh, but for some uh, some uh, um, 
for some areas is uh, it's more it's more accurate to uh, to start at January, uh, March, December. So this is something that you typically need to uh, would need to adapt. Okay, and then you make uh, some kind of uh, uh, object which uh, represents the uh, the uh, time uh, the time axis that you're using. So the time axis in climatologies are a bit a bit weird in a sense that. Uh, when you want to make a, a, a monthly climatology, yeah. So the first time instance would be January, but for any year, yeah. So um, um, so the kind, some kind of okay. You when you select your data to making the uh, January climatology, you're selecting only basing based on the months and not on the year. And so this is uh, captured in the time selector object, but it's maybe too too uh, uh, too technical. So only think about you have to define two things: the year list and the months list. Here in our case, the year list is just all the data that we have. But you can also, for some applications, it would be interesting to make a, a monthly climatology, but uh, uh, per decade, for instance. Yeah. So you know, in the Mediterranean Sea, there has been a, a quite a shift. In the uh, um, in the circulation in the in the 90s, if I'm not uh, mistaken, so it, it might be useful to uh, to make a climatologies before and after this uh, uh, this year. Okay. Questions. Questions. Mm. Yeah. In some cases, we are. We are not you uh, really want to make a average climatology, average monthly seasonal climatology. We just want to aggregate all the data within a certain uh, with certain certain time period. So th now, thanks to the Argo data, we have a quite good coverage. So sometimes, so it might be reasonable to say what is the average uh, um, uh, temperature for uh, for January uh, this year. So for a particular year. So this is also a, a question that we can uh, that we can use, but then we would use a different time selector. Okay. So here, as before, we are loading um, a data file which represents the data in the Adriatic Sea. So it, uh, it is as before an ODV file. Uh, we download it download it from our server. And uh, we're loading the data. Okay. So this this step uh, takes a bit, takes about three minutes to load all the data, and that's what's the reason why I asked you to do it before. Okay. So um, so now did everybody able to was everybody able to uh, execute this step? So. Um, so I, I would think by now that uh, Julia is not running anymore. Yeah. So did somebody get an error message, or everybody was able to download, to load, to download, and then load into memory the, the data? Yeah. Okay. Great. So now let's see how many data points we have. Okay. So before we plotting it. So. Ops value as a value of the data point. If we just hit it like this, oh, ops value, sorry. So back in the day, when I used MATLAB, and if I forgot the point, some put somewhere a semicolon, it will just print out in the terminal all of the values that were in the in a given. Um, array and if you use MATLAB, that's something that that is you know it quite painfully. But here in in, in Julia, if you if you um, if you ask Julia a, a very large value, a very long vector, it will just print out the first ten values and the last ten values, and we will see here that we have um, one hundred thirty four thousand data points. Okay, so it's it's a it's a quite quite large data set. Okay. 
So now, what do you what do you remember? What we do in order to plot just the data locations? Yeah? Which function do we use? So we want to just have a plot where we're showing uh, the uh, uh, the longitude latitude as a simple dots on the map. Plot exactly exactly. Do you remember what was the first argument? What was exactly longitude? And then latitude. Excellent. And uh, it doesn't make any sense to join all these lines because it's just a uh, uh, scattered plot. The order of the data is not really important. So we are just asking oops, to make just dots for for the plots. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so it is. Yeah, 100,000 uh, data points, so it is quite a lot, but okay, it did actually work. Okay. I like to know the first and the Ah, really? Okay, okay, oops. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, it is, it is, uh, it is, uh, there, there are a lot of data points and, um, and OPSLON and OPSLAT are really the data point of every scalar measurement. So they are typically, uh, in situ data, organized in profiles, so a lot of points which are exactly at the same locations. Um, but here we just plot them all and we have something like, like this. Okay. So now, um, so I hope you recognize the area, or maybe you recognize the area. Yeah, it's the Adriatic Sea. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell because we don't see the coastline, but we have uh, actually quite a lot of data, so we can we can uh, imagine quite well that this is here the uh, uh, um, the southern part of Italy, and it's it's a very beautiful coastline of, uh, of Croatia. So, um, <clears throat> so was everybody able to do? To this kind of uh, plot? Didn't we stress the server too much? So, can you raise your hand if you had an error message? Okay, so very good. So, it is, it's, uh, it's, it worked. Um, now, let's check the uh, um, the extreme values of observations. Yeah. So already Julia itself has some has some functions to extract the maximum value of an array. Observal maximum observal that gives us the maximum value. Okay. Forty psu. Yeah. That's that's still possible. And if you want to extract them, uh, have, if you want to know the maximum and the minimum, there's a function which is called extrema, which gives you both. First argument is the minimum, and then the maximum. Okay. But as as this is a quite quite common operation, we have implemented in Julia also the function check ops. Um, which does this okay so you would first give the locations yeah as a, as a, as a tuple Opsilon, ops, that, ops, depth, and ops time. I guess that's the way I called it when I loaded them. Yeah. And then the, dot, the data value. 
cops var and then some identifiers ops id which is called op, ops and ops id okay. ops id so let's check if this works or if i mistyped something ah okay it did, it did work okay so that's a routine check on the data make a simple range check to see if uh, if all the values are within a reasonable range okay so and in fact yeah the values uh, the longitude the first dimension is the longitude latitude second dimension third dimension depth and fourth dimension is time okay all of them are quite have a quite reasonable range okay And if I, if I remember correctly, if some value is, for instance, none, yeah, it will give you an error or a warning. You know, if one value is none or one value is in, for it will give you a warning and also printing out the identifier of the observation, which is none. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Everybody was able to check the uh, observations, so make a basic range check. I see some smoking heads, so maybe um, let's wait a bit more. So let's see what else we have. Okay, um, so the next thing is about the bathymetry. So we already taught this before. We have to choose the, the bathymetry. That's a, uh, it's a main input in, for DIVA. Is there any questions or any problems? No? Okay. So let's, uh, let's get the bathymetry. It's now... Uh, a bit of a uh, somewhat finer bathymetry that we used before. It is downloaded now in the, uh, the Jupyter Hub environment. As before, we need to load it. So load but does actually two things. It loads um, the bathymetry and it already interpolated, interpolated to the resolution that we, that we want. But that's quite typical that uh, uh, bathymetric products are available as a quite high resolution, but uh, we're not able to make a climatology at the same resolution because simply we don't have enough data. So, uh, so like a, a project like MONET Bathymetry make a bathymetric resolution at the order of, uh, of 200, 300 meters resolution, so it's really, really fine. Uh, but it's it is out of question to have uh, uh, temperature or salinity values or, or, or uh, uh, biological concentration values at a similar resolution. So it's so typically we need to degrade the resolution of the bathymetry in order to use it. Okay. So while we use plot to just plot the location of the data, uh, do you remember which function we uh, I did use to um, to make uh, to plot gridded uh, gridded fields. So maybe those who use MATLAB remember how to plot gridded field. P color exactly 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 P color, and it happens that P stands for pseudo color. Okay, so p color is used to uh, to plot the bathymetry. Um, so let's plot b x, b y, and then so it uses uh, um, so Julia and uh, and uh, 
So Python library matplotlib uses a lot of conventions from MATLAB. And also one of convention MATLAB is that the first axis uh, in arrays are on the, uh, on the y axis and the second axis on the x axis. So this is a bit in inconvenient for us and therefore we have to transpose the arrays. Yeah? This was also showed before with permute dim. You know, um, but you can also transpose it like uh, with a uh, with a um, with a prime. In order to actually transpose it in, into memory, we have can use the function uh, uh, copy. Okay, so this is quite similar to what Charles has shown before with the function permute dim. But here I prefer to write like this because it's slightly slightly shorter. Okay, so. I can show you also what happens if you forget. Oh, no. Undo, undo, undo. Copy. Cell above. Control V. So if if we just forget it, uh, then we will see. Yeah, but see quite a quite a nasty error message, which probably don't doesn't tell us a lot, but it simply means that we forgot to permute it, the dimension. So if we transpose it, okay. So here, so I try exactly. I try to uh, so. Um, one, one, one of the problems uh, in PyPlot is that it doesn't know how to handle transposed arrays. And in a new version of Julia, uh, transposed arrays are not actually transposed in memory, but just marked that they are transposed for efficiency reasons. And, um, and so I think that PyPlot should handle uh, this array as well, but this is unfortunately not, not, uh, not implemented right now. So uh, if you see an error message, saying that I cannot deal with strided arrays, then uh, it means that we should use com copy. But I just found out that, it's, that I cannot reproduce this error method and it uh, simply worked with, uh, without this copy. Okay, surprise. <laughs> so maybe this was just added recently. Okay. Okay, so, so again, what we see here is the, the bathymetry. Uh, would be nicer to see the color bar. Okay, that's actually the depths below, uh, the depths above sea level. Okay. Of the Adriatic. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, do you have any questions so far? Yeah. If you look at the documentation, could you just take off the documentation for people? Sure. Uh, uh, I was just curious. It sort of says in the signature that uh, there's like the square brackets around. It. Yeah. Yeah. So X and Y are actually optional. Yeah. So for quick data visualization, you can just drop them. So if you if you want to just uh, visualize B like this, it's possible. What you get now, um, da, 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 da. what you get now, is on the axis instead of longitude latitude. You will get simply the indices. Yeah. yeah they interpret it as being an array. <laughs> ah no, no, this this means uh, optional. You can you can yeah, it uh, looks like an array, but uh, it is it is optional. Okay. I can hear you. I will repeat the question. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, what were the when you the arguments that are uh, named arguments, mm -hmm. can you do that in Julia? 
So, yeah, exactly. So, um, so one of the possible named arguments is called uh, uh, vmin. So the minimum value, if I'm not mistaken. So let's let's try this. No. So it will just uh, start the column up starting at zero up to the specified value. So everything which is now um, uh, so now everything which is exactly at C level will appear dark blue. So probably Vmax would be a better choice to see now everything which is in the ocean. So everything so now we see only the uh, the bathymetry in the the depths below the sea level. Okay. Okay. And so here you would use either comma or you can also use a semicolon to separate normal values from the so both both work when you call. You can also use the semis here. This works as well. Okay. Oh, any, any other questions? Can you think about a question to ask? Um, That's not a question, it's a comment. All the plot we are doing, in fact, we use uh, Python code. So if you look at the documentation coming, it's another side. It doesn't look like Julia comments uh, description. It's because Julia, in fact, is calling uh, masterplot. So that's why maybe the square bracket were used and maybe confusing because it's the documentation of the Python function used to do it. Mm. So Julia is using a uh, pipe. Uh, yeah. I plot in this case, it's Python plot, plot unit mm, Okay, yeah, yeah. Another thing uh, quite subtle about uh, uh, our p-color, which also in inherited by MATLAB, it's that uh, if you have a, an array, the very last column and the very uh, last row is not is not uh, uh, plotted. Yeah. There are reasons for it, but it's, uh, yeah, it's something to take into account. Okay. So, any other questions? So, if not, we can we can break now for lunch, okay? And I think we will be back at. Do you remember? One hour. One hour break. I will check the. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so, really, don't hesitate to ask any questions, and uh, even during lunch, we will be available for this. Thanks.